accounting for real estate transactions in case the business entity is preparing its uh, financials uh, under indian gap then guidance note on accounting for real estate transactions has to be implemented or in case the in business entity is uh, preparing its financials as per indas then indas 115 is applicable in this session we will learn how accounting for real estate transactions is prescribed under institute guidance note what is the scope well, these particular transactions are dealt in this guidance note like sale of plots sale of plots with development development and sale of residential and commercial units with or without undivided share of land and acquisition utilization and share of uh, sale of developmental rights redevelopment of existing building and joint development agreement for any of any of the above businesses and what it covers actually this particular guidance note takes the emphasis of accounting standard 7 construction contracts and accounting standard 9 revenue recognition because why accounting standard 7 because it is related to like construction contracts only and hence that particular uh, accounting standard is also being emphasized here and revenue recognition based upon this guidance note we have to recognize revenue also so the main aspects important uh, relevant aspects of accounting standard 9 revenue recognition is also covered under this guidance note next what is the out of the scope of this particular guidance note is accounting standard 10 accounting for fixed assets suppose if this particular contract is going to be a fixed asset of the entity then we should not follow this guidance note it, has, it should be accounting standard 10 accordingly in case of government grants in case of leases and intangible assets this particular guidance note should not be used and respective accounting standards has only to be adopted as per this guidance note percentage of completion method has to be used if the following four criteria has been satisfied by any entity one is all critical approvals necessary for commencement of the project have been obtained so there as per the guidance note it says that all approvals which are required for execution of this particular project has to be received so what are that they have defined i mean they have listed in the guidance note few items one is environmental and other clearances approval of plans designs etc title to land or other rights to development construction and change in land use we have to check whether these conditions are satisfied next stage of completion is equal to or beyond 25 percent <coughs> the completion of the project as on the date of reporting should be equal to or more than 25 percent then this but revenue and cost has to be recognized as per this guidance note otherwise no at least 25 percent of the saleable project area is secured by contracts or agreements with buyers so total project has out of the total project 25 percent of the project has to be secured by contracts or agreements that means there is a confirmed customer or confirmed sale agreement with the customers in order to implement this particular guidance note and next and the last one fourth one is at least 10 percent of the total revenue as per the agreements of sale or any other legal enforceable documents are realized at the reporting date in respect of each of the contracts so whatever the contracts have been entered office 10 percent is realized or secured then this particular guidance note can be implemented so all these four conditions has to be satisfied in case of first point it is not necessary that those four points are only to be seen depending upon the type of the project we have to ensure that critical approvals for the execution of the project has been received by the entity then we can 
consider this particular guidance note for recognition of revenue and cost. Guidance note further defined what are project costs. Cost of land and cost of developmental rights, borrowing cost, construction and development cost, which include land conversion costs, municipal sanction fee, building permissions, material and contractual payments, technical professional charges, estimated rectification and guarantee work, including expected warranty costs, especially this particular point, estimated rectification and guarantee work including expected warranty costs. See, this particular point is very important because in, in execution of the project, there may be some equipments which are installed like air conditioning, diesel generator sets and any say STP, all these things, they may have some warranty cost also which is paid at the inception of the contract then that cost also has to be included say for example in the recent years we have got even this RERA under RERA we have to ensure that there is five years warranty to the consumer in that case when I issue a contract to the vendor then I will include this five years warranty also then obviously his price will be hiked to that extent. So that cost also forms part of the project cost that also can be considered under project cost. Next claims from third parties. Suppose when I am developing, there may be certain claims from adjacent sites or from <coughs> neighbors. So those claims also is required. So it has to be considered as project cost and insurance. There may be various insurance taken like workman compensation or uh, car policy, all these insurance and property insurance while construction, all these things will form part of the construction cost, project cost. Next water, it further defined water project revenues. Project revenue are revenue on sale of plots and divided share. It depends upon type of business, what the entity is doing, then accordingly that forms part of the revenue sale of finished and semi-finished structures. So if there are any finished or semi-finished structures and we are selling that, then that also to be considered as revenue. Consideration for construction of flat amenities and interiors. In case of flats, the sale of flats or any amenities associated with the flats. And in case if we are giving any interior works along with the flat, all this uh, uh, collection will be considered as revenue and as per the guidance note. Consideration for parking spaces along with the flats, the builders, developers sell the parking spaces also. The money collected towards parking space also will be considered as revenue and sale of development rights. In case if the business is of, if the uh, business, uh, business entity, entity has got some developmental rights and they have sold certain developmental rights to somebody else, then that also forms part of the revenue as per the guidance note. Project revenues are measured as the consideration received or receivable. It is accrual basis whether it is received or not. It has to be considered as revenue for the purpose of the calculating revenue as per the guidance note. And further the guidance note has specifically mentioned what cost doesn't form part of this particular project cost. That is general administrative cost. This is a general cost, not specific to project. So this will not apply. Selling costs like brokerage, uh, marketing expenses, all does not form part of this project cost. So we should not include sales and distribution costs here. And research and development costs, if there is any research involved, then that cost also cannot be considered as project cost. Depreciation of ideal plant and equipment. Suppose if I have, if I have, deployed some equipment for the purpose of the project for some reason if the project was uh, stayed during some period then the depreciation for that particular period should not be charged to project it should be charged to p and l directly as a ideal time cost it cannot be added to the cost similarly cost of unconsumed or uninstalled material delivered at site suppose if i procured some material 
which is not consumed it then that should not be formed part of a project cost it should be shown as inventory under current assets and advance payment to contractors if any mobilization advance or advance against supply of material is paid to the contractor then that also does not form part of the project cost it is very specifically given in the guidance note and accordingly we have to consider what is the total cost of the project and what is the total revenue of the project under the guidance note now let us take one illustration to understand how costs and revenue are calculated as per the guidance note i will run through the question then we will see how the solution will be worked out xyz limited building a residential project the details are as follows number of units 100 members total area of the project 120000 square feet area registered till 31st march 2020 80000 square feet that means 80000 square feet area has been customers has been registered the agreement next cost details they have given various cost details like land cost sanction fee architecture cost other technical professional charges material cost labor cost finance cost other cost like water electricity equipment hire charges etc indirect tax cost and total budgeted cost so here there are two columns what is budgeted cost and what is actual cost incurred total budgeted cost is 40 crore 97 lakhs 20000 and actual cost incurred as on 31st march 2020 is 32 lakh 21000 65000 further they have given brokerage costs incurred 1 1 1/2 crore revenue of sold units is 45 crores and revenue from registered units 40 crores see why they have given revenue of sold units and revenue of registered units is if you refer to four points of criteria they have sold they have told that units i mean registered agreements where there are registered agreements so we have to consider 40 crores we should not consider sold units of 45 crores because worth of 5 crores worth of customers have not registered their agreement so the return i mean they may cancel at any point of time there is a uncertainty in revenue recognition and hence we should not consider 45 crores we should consider only 40 crores now what is the question calculate the following assuming xyz limited is making financial sender i gap so we have to follow the guidance note cost and revenue to be recognized is for financial year 1920 and closing inventory as on 31st march 2020 what is the cost of goods sold and what is the value of sale revenue that to that to be considered for financials of march 2020 we will learn step by step first step is computation of percentage of completion percentage of completion can be computed by dividing actual cost with budgeted cost into 100 then we arrive at what is the actual percentage of completion of the project so as per the numbers given it is 78.63% is the project completed as on 31st march 2020 now second step computation of revenue for financial year 1920 if you refer to the problem the value of 40 crores and 45 crores is given with respect to total agreement value it is not the revenue for the current financial year all these projects usually or run over period of time more than 12 months this this is a long duration projects mostly these projects are done more than a one financial year so in, as per the guidance note we have to arrive at what is the revenue that has to be recognized for this particular financial year and it is always calculated on cumulative basis and then we will deduct whatever recognized if anything recognized in the early, previous earlier years then we will arrive at what is the net to be considered for revenue for this particular year similarly cost also so whatever working we are doing is on cumulative basis as on 31st march 2020 in case as on 31st march 2019 any revenue is already recognized on this project then to that extent we have to deduct and net amount only has to be considered in this financial
per annum sphere so the 40 crores is is the total revenue of which what is the percentage completion 78.63 so my revenue for the cumulative basis as on 31st march 2020 is 31 crore 45 lakh 22112 suppose if in the problem if any amount is given that the revenue is considered as on 31st march 2019 then to that extent we have to deduct and net amount has to be taken as revenue in the current financial year otherwise it is the total revenue to be considered for this financial year and this particular 40 crores is taken as informed you earlier it is a confirmed registered units and hence we have considered on 40 crores not on 45 crores this point has to be noted here we have learnt what is the revenue to be recognized for march 2020 now let us compute what will be the cost corresponding to that particular revenue now as per the given problem total project area is 120000 square feet whereas the area registered that is confirmed sales is 80000 square feet the total cost incurred on the project as on 31st march 2020 is 32 crore 21 lakh 65000 this particular cost is incurred on total area of 1 lakh 20000 this is to be noted very clearly this particular cost whatever the cost has been incurred it is incurred on the overall project it is not on 80000 square feet or 90000 square feet it is incurred for the entire project of 1 lakh 20000 square feet as per the project so we have to find out what is the square feet rate of cost incurred as on 31st march 2020 so total cost incurred as on 31st march 2020 that is 32 crore 21 lakh 65000 divided by 1 lakh 20000 total project area saleable area of the project so it comes to 2684.71 pi per square feet and now what is the confirmed area which is sold it is given in the problem 80000 so we have to multiply this cost incurred per square feet that is 2684.71 pi into 80000 square feet we 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 get an amount of 21 crore 47 lakh 76667 this is the total cost attributable to the revenue which was recognized earlier of 31 crores in previous slide so this is the how cost is calculated please understand the total cost incurred till the date of reporting divided by total project area or saleable area has to be calculated in order to multiply with confirmed sold sold area to arrive at total cost to be recognized so here as per the problem 21 crore 47 lakh 76667 again i impress on the point this is total cost on cumulative basis if any cost recognized till end of the previous financial year say in this example 31st march 2019 that has to be deducted from here and net figure only has to be considered as cost of goods sold in the given problem no such information is given so we presume nothing was recognized in till financial year 2019 march and hence the entire amount will be considered as cost for march 31st march 2020 now what is the value of inventory to be taken to current assets okay now total cost incurred is given 32 crore 21 lakh 65000 less cost recognized to pnl for 31st march 2020 which we have calculated in step 3 that is 21 crore 47 lakh 76667 so balance whatever the cost incurred and which is not recognized in pnl will be 10 crore 73 lakh 88333 so this will go as inventory of unfinished goods unfinished flats in balance sheet under current assets
couple of important points to be noted here one is that the revenue whatever we have recognized in the give as per the given example is 78.63 percentage based upon the percentage completion method now we have to check whether 80000 square feet confirmed customers have been billed to the extent of 78.63% in case if they have not billed to the extent of 78.63 then it is necessary to create notional debtors for the reason being without having created the advance in the books of accounts it is difficult we cannot create we cannot account for revenue that is the reason we have to create notional letters provided if the customers have not billed to the extent of percentage of revenue recognition so now here i am quoting you the entry that notional debtors account debit to installment received in advance this particular entry is necessarily to be passed in case the customers have not billed equivalent to 78.63 if they have they are billed more than that percentage then well and good there is no further adjustment is required otherwise this particular difference has to be identified and to that extent we have to create notional debtors next another important point is that there may be certain customers on whom we have recognized revenue and subsequently they may cancel in such cases then in any of the financial years there may be a negative revenue also then in such cases we have to immediately report that negative revenue to pnl so these two points have to be noted hope you understood this particular working keep watching my youtube channel and share to relevant people thank you